Today on Hashtag This and That, I will be talking with Alexa Lampasona and Michelle Lamelza about being in roles that have been historically dominated by men. Women seem to be steered more towards other options when this option might not be brought up to them. So right. like an engineering job, it might not seem like um, what a woman wants to do. Mm -hmm. I always get a lot of guys okay. in those and they, you know, track, I mean, literally all walks and they're like, yeah, I got this. And they come in, I just love smashing them. You know, especially being a woman. Hashtag this and that is a show dedicated to covering a diversity of topics important to women from the perspective and experience of fellow women. Our goal is to give the inside scoop to help and educate women on issues relevant to our daily lives. Thanks for joining another episode of Hashtag This and That on Woman to Woman TV. Today, my guests Alexa Lampasona and Michelle Lamelza are going to be discussing being in jobs that have historically been dominated by men. Alexa, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you so much for having Absolutely. me. Absolutely. Um, I majored in biology okay. for my undergrad. And I did that because I was planning on being a medical doctor, okay. so that was the goal. Um, however, I became involved in research, okay. a research project um, with my undergrad, looking at how a certain gene mutation might be the, one of the causative factors of ALS, or okay. amyotrophic lateral scler sclerosis. Mm -hmm. um, so that That's really also Lou Gehrig's. Lou Gehrig's okay. disease, exactly, yeah. So that got me really interested in actually doing research and looking at how certain genes can malfunction and cause these diseases that the doctors then are trying to treat. So this would be more of a research-based career, and okay. that's what I decided I wanted to do. So I applied to grad school, okay. um, and now I'm a Ph.D. candidate oh, wow. for um, molecular and cellular pharmacology. That's amazing. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank so you. this one project you became so invested in that you actually wanted to make an entire career out of it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't do I don't do that project now just because mm -hmm. I'm working on my own thesis work, but okay. um, it sort of got me really interested in looking at basic science and mm -hmm. how the body works on such a molecular level. So in layman terms, if possible, tell us what your thesis is about. Okay, so um, I'm really interested in how the brain develops. Okay. So in order for the brain to develop, cells called neurons um, need to migrate to go to the positions where they will be throughout their life and form connections with other neurons okay. so that they can um, communicate with each other. Okay. So in order for these neurons to migrate, genes need to be expressed at the right time, the right place, and the right amount. Okay. So I'm really interested in looking at how these genes are expressed in order to regulate neuron migration in order for the brain to develop normally. Wow, that's pretty intricate. <laughs> so why don't you take us back a little bit to around high school? You said you wanted to be a medical doctor, so were you very invested in the sciences even back then? Um, I would say no, I mean I was interested in it, but I really had no idea. So mm -hmm. um, I think that one of the biggest problems in like high school in general, um, and this could apply to both men and women, is just lack of knowledge of knowing what the career options are. Like right. we had some sort of guidance, but really not enough because right. I changed my major three times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, I started out going for something completely different. And then okay. I just decided along the way that I wanted to be a medical doctor. And that's when I got into biology pre-med. Okay. And even then, I didn't do that because mm -hmm. I became interested in something else. So. Okay. So, but you like what you're doing now? Yes. <laughs> okay. So when you were in college taking these classes, what was the female to male ratio? Um, it, to be honest, our college was pretty different than most. Mm -hmm. um, it started out probably more men, mm -hmm. um, but as the years went on, more people switched their major. As okay. biology is like, a, it's kind of a hard major for right. undergrads, so um, a lot of people had switched at that time. So the woman to male ratio was actually more women in my biology department. Okay. Um, however, the school in general was a big engineering school, so another science field almost all men. Why do you think that even still today there's not as much as there has been, but predominantly more men than women? I just think it might be the type of field that it attracts mm -hmm. more men. Um, women seem to be steered more towards other options when this option might not be brought up to them. So right. like an engineering job, it might not seem like um, what a woman wants to do. Mm -hmm. To be honest, it's so rewarding, and especially because women are created, there's more opportunities for women nowadays um, right. in the sciences. Absolutely. There's certain scholarships. I know L'Oreal has a lot of 
scholarships that they give out to postdocs. So after you get your PhD, after you uh, have your doctorate, you can get a postdoc, which is just another a continuation of your research. And L'Oreal funds um, work for these people, so like for women mm -hmm. exclusively. So it's one of those opportunities that uh, women have to get them more interested in the science field. Okay, so now that you're kind of a little bit more than the regular college classes, do you see also that there's more women in them? Um, I think it's half and half about. Okay. Um, so certain certain classes are different than others, so like I'm taking um, a pathobiology class right now, and that is more men, I think. Um, and I think that's because that's more of a physician's assistant class that like that's, that, that's the type of job that these people are looking for with this class so there seems to be more men in that in my program it's pretty split down the middle you're kind of seeing that women are emerging a little bit more in these fields yeah and I think it really helps um, having a lot of older women involved so like as a part of the pharmacology program that I am in the program director for 11 years was a woman so and we have um, an administra administrator, like coordinator. She's a woman as well. So it sort of provides us with a more like you. You see all these women in these great mm -hmm. jobs, and you strive to be that yourself. And what about the actual professors or teachers that you're working with? Are they predominantly women or um, men? It's it's again, it's about half and half now, which is really good because I think that it's it's a lot better. Like a long time ago, you know, this was unheard of to have all these women um, PIs, we call them principal investigators, that are basically lead a lab. So um, it was really uncommon to have a lot of women. Now there's a lot of them. I mean, my PI is a man, but he's married to someone who is in the department as well. So it's like, oh, wow. yeah. So um, that's also really encouraging to see that you have, um, um, you have a woman that has kids and she is running her own lab. And that's very like that's very good because right. you know she's a she has a career but she's also a mom and that's something that like a lot of times you know it's career or family and especially absolutely with, especially for the women yeah exactly it's not so much at, for the men mm -hmm. but um, it's encouraging to see that in our department that these women um, they run their labs full time but they have children and um, it makes you want to like aspire to be like that and you realize that it is possible yes. to do that yeah and it's, it's hard because it's very demanding like you have to I mean, for being in the sciences, you have to keep up with literature. So, like, you're working throughout the day, you know, maybe nine to five. Most of the time it's longer. Um, but you go home and you have to read and you have to just keep up with everyone's publishing. Otherwise, you'll fall behind. So Absolutely. it's, like, very demanding on a day-to-day -day basis. So. Absolutely. So have you seen, going through the program, any struggles that you faced as a woman that you don't think a man would face, or you even don't see those struggles anymore? So I haven't seen any of those. Um, I've heard of some issues. So I've heard of certain PIs have a um, stricter, like they're stricter for men than they are for women because they think the men should be working harder because they will actually be scientists and women will not be. Very, okay. yeah, so it's very rough to see people going through that because, you know, they shouldn't be counted out for being a woman. And being hard on, being hard on someone is different than like constructive criticism. Like a woman can take constructive criticism, it's not like she can't. I'm sure it was, you've heard about it, it was on the news, Nobel laureate. Um, Tim Hunt, I think his name is, mm -hmm. and he gave a speech to a senior to senior scientists that were all women, and said, "Here's my problem with women in a lab: they either fall in love with you, you fall in love with them, and when you criticize them, they cry." So yeah, so he gave that speech to women, and it was outrageous. I mean, everyone was saying, "You can't like, what are we in Victorian times? You know, you right. can't say things like that because." It's not true. Like Absolutely. constructive criticism is criticism. If somebody says you're not doing something right and they offer um, explanation and help, then mm -hmm. of course you're going to take it. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, social media exploded with that. Like women were posting pictures of them in hazmat suits and lab coats and saying, and because one of the things was that they were distractingly sexy. That's what women like right. were sexy, and that's how. And naturally, when you're in a lab coat, you're just oozing sexy. Yeah, so they were, like, wrote the hashtag distractingly sexy with like face masks on of mm -hmm. uh, like the, with hazmat suits. It was really it was really funny and it was funny to see how um, social media exploded with that. Absolutely and it's nice to see that the women who are in those fields are coming together and not letting comments like that 
tear them down or destroy them yep. anymore and they have a supporting system. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's definitely obvious that every woman in the science feel like they support each other. They want each other to do well. Absolutely. So when you're working on a project or homework, anything like that, do you tend to work with women or men or um, both? I would I say both. I mean, my program, the people in my year, they're more women. So I think it seems that there's just more women like that I'm working with. Um, but it's both. Does it ever come up as a discussion about what it's like to be in the sciences in this day and age and how far we've come? Yeah, I mean, it definitely does, especially since some of these people that, were, that I was talking about, I know their struggles with being men versus women in the lab where the PI doesn't think women will amount to as much. So that definitely does come up. And it's something that's insane because like as our program has proved, there are so many fantastic women scientists. I mean, it's obvious we had the program director and just everyone involved in the admissions committee, most of them were women. It was just obvious to see that they're really good scientists. That's amazing. And so the male, you said you have a male PI mm -hmm. and there's quite a few, I'm sure, mm -hmm. uh, in the school. So have you seen that they support you and that they really do want you guys to do well and help you? Yeah, I mean, um, there's a lot of, there's also like, a, New York Women in STEM uh, Foundation. So uh, we get a lot of emails about events that they do and like career workshops that they host. So that's always really good to go to. Like if you're looking for, once you get more towards the end of your career um, as your PhD career, and then you're going to go on to do a postdoc, um, you need to look for jobs. So that program is specifically for helping women find postdocs and jobs and things like that. Okay, so what is the ultimate goal of going through the research and the PhD candidacy that you're doing right now? What would you ultimately like to be doing? So um, I really would like to work in the industry, so in the pharmaceutical industry, um, I mean you probably know some of the big ones like Pfizer and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, I really would want to work on like a research and design team. Okay. So basically looking at, I would probably be more interested in doing basic science, but hopefully being able to progress it towards a drug development. That's awesome. Yeah. And do you know what the male to female ratio is in that? That I'm not sure. Um, okay. I'm sure that it is still dominated by men, especially like in the big industries. Right. Um, if you're going to look at only scientists, because those companies have other jobs as well. They have like mm -hmm. consulting and other things like that. But I think it's getting better. I think a lot more women are being encouraged to join the industry, especially because right. the industry would be more demanding for having children as well. So do you think that higher up as you go on the chain, especially in terms of uh, in terms of pharmaceutical, that it's still predominated by men more so? I mean, I'm not sure, but I would I would guess, guess just yeah. because um, these people might be older. Mm -hmm. It's like might have might be have uh, had that position for a long time. So most of the time, like when they're older, there's more men because back like a while ago, you know, there weren't as many women in the sciences. Absolutely. So what advice do you have for anyone who wants to go into the sciences in I mean, any realm? Yeah, I mean, go for it. If you want to do it, like you have to go for it. Um, you have to talk to people about like what it entails because um, sometimes it's a different like different reality than what you're expecting especially research is a very it can be a frustrating process when you're trying to do something and you think like one thing and something's not working so it can be really frustrating um, that's really more for men and women but um, for women I mean don't be don't be discouraged if there's not a lot of women applying sometimes there's specific grants like I was saying for L'Oreal that are specifically for women and um, you're likely to be funded just because if you have a really good idea because they want to get women involved. Right. We'll have to catch up with you in a few years and yeah. see how you're doing. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back.
We're back with my next guest, Michelle Lamelza. Michelle, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Back in college, um, actually as a kid, I was always very much into fitness. I have a twin sister. We we're always active, you know, whether it was street hockey or mm -hmm. stickball with the neighborhood boys. So in college, I actually have started studying in theater arts. Okay. So I got a degree in that. I'm like, well, I kind of need a backup plan. And then I just worked toward a second degree in exercise and sports science. Because okay. I always had this secret obsession with fitness, just working out, strength training, going to the gym. Okay, and so are you working with that degree now? I guess you can say that. I mean, I do group fitness. I okay. group fitness instruction. Absolutely. Um, small group training, things like that. Okay. And then just mainly for myself because I just love to challenge myself, uh -huh. you know, physically. Do you do these classes at gyms or? I do um, definitely corporate gyms and then a couple of boutique studios in the city, which okay. I like a little bit better because it's a little bit more of an intimate atmosphere. Okay. Um, and then we just, you know, see all walks of life. Right. Yeah. How did you get into that? Um, in college, my sister and I were like, hey, let's try this group fitness class. Like, let's see what this is about. Because I was always on the workout floor. Right. Uh, we took one, and then we're like, oh, this is kind of cool. And then I just slowly became obsessed with it because, you know, you okay. have other people to push you right. in class, even though I was always hiding in the back. And then about five years ago or so, I'm like, I would really like to teach. And I'm like, ah, I don't know. And then worked on my first cert, and then it just became... You know, it just kind of just went uphill from there. Right. You know, I just want to, oh, I want to, I want to do this next. And then my big, big thing is inspiring people. Uh -huh. So when people come to me and say that they are, they feel inspired, I'm like, oh, fuck on. Right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So. Okay. So why don't you explain a little bit of what these group fitness classes actually are? Because I know a lot of times gyms provide classes, but sometimes it's Zumba or silver sneakers for senior citizens. So what is it that you actually do? So the ones that I teach, I do like a kickboxing and then a barbell, but my favorite ones in the small group training uh, are hit classes. So it's, okay. yeah, we, they can range from 30 minutes to 50 minutes. And what it is, it's designed to get your heart rate from zero to 100, literally in like five seconds. But to me, and I don't know if you've heard it, that's kind of the best way to get in shape. You know, we don't need to be in the gym for two hours a day, three hours a day. Okay. 30 minutes, knock it out. But I always love those because I always get a lot of guys okay. in those. And they, you know, track, I mean, literally all walks. And they're like, yeah, I got this. And they come in, I just love smashing them. You know, especially being a woman. Absolutely. You know, and I just love it. So they like, come in and awesome, think it's man. gonna be easy. Yeah, or they're like, well, what, what could she like give us that Teach I'm not me. already used to doing? Right, and then how you do know? you see them during oh, I the did. class? I love it, and they're like dying, which is really interesting that the women actually push themselves a little bit harder. Okay. Like I can't, exp maybe, their fitness level isn't as high, or maybe their strength level. Right. But the women always push themselves more than, they, from what I've seen. And so do you work out in addition to these group classes? Oh, absolutely. I actually have like three separate trainers just okay. to like mix it up. And then I'll do workouts on my own. Okay, so you yeah. think it's important that even if oh. you are teaching that you still... Oh my gosh, absolutely, because you have to set an example. Right. And not only that, you know, you set a bar, then you got to like beat that bar. And right. Then, yeah. Constantly working towards another oh. goal. Oh, absolutely. Okay. So yeah. do you see that there's a lot of male trainers or a lot of male group teachers? Oh, yeah. One of the gyms, actually two of the gyms that I belong to, predominantly male okay. trainers. Okay. They might have one female. I think they just hired an additional female. And I'm just like, what? You know, I was asking my trainer and he said, no, it's just so hard to get them. I don't know really? if it's, they feel intimidated. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. It's very, because most of the clients rather chain, like rather train with, with a woman. Right. Do you make sure that in your classes you push everyone? Oh, absolutely. But I also say, you know, just, you know, watch yourselves. If you right. feel like, if you ever get to the point where it's like, oh my God, stop, mm -hmm. you know, and then, you know, come back to it. But absolutely, okay. absolutely. And so yeah. have you had anyone come up to you and, I don't want to say compare, but oh, yeah. basically say you're a female trainer, I've worked with male trainers, how do they feel about 
the difference. Now, prior to a, a class or a group training, I, I get that. Like, mm -hmm. I get that. Uh, you always know, and then they come to me, oh, well, I do this and this and this. I'm like, all right, cool. So anyway, go ahead and grab a, a set of kettlebells. Or, But it's always funny that after class, and it's always more so the guys, man, that was awesome, man. You push me. You know, they just are almost surprised. Right. That, which should be insulting, but it's totally not. I think it's definitely You feel like you did your job yeah, almost absolutely, at that point. Yeah, absolutely, because I would expect it. I said, I get it. So have you taking classes that were either taught by a man oh, yeah. or woman? Oh, definitely. And I, I think I've actually gotten more of workout from the females. Really? It, it really goes both ways. Me, personally, classes that I've taken, I think the women have pushed me harder okay. or possibly just inspired me to go harder. Yes. So it could be that. Because you may be able to relate to them yeah, more. Yeah, it could be that. It could be that. Yeah. So have you yeah. seen getting into these classes, getting into these gyms, maybe not so much now because it seems like you're very comfortable a few sure. years in, but in the beginning, did you have some hesitation? Oh my God. Yeah. And then just going into the gym, you know, walking past like the cardio equipment or right. going into the... Like, my favorite thing, I have a twin, so I was always really lucky. I always had a partner, <laughs> and we're competitive with each other. But, right. like, my favorite thing was always being able to squat more than the guys. Like, my, it was always funny in the gym when they're like, oh, you need help with that? I'm like, no, I'm good. Like, I remember back in, like, high school, which was, like, forever ago. But back then, they put me mistakenly in an intermediate weightlifting as an elective, and they're like, oh, we're going to get you out of there. I'm like... No, it's cool. And I remember that at first I was so intimidated and afraid. I go, no, I'm staying just on principle. Right. And the guys like ended up loving me. And these were all like men on the football team. And, okay. and they loved me even more because I was able to like press more than them. Right. I mean, leg press, you know, but, yeah. but I gained so much respect from that Absolutely. because I respected, you know, the sport, Right. you know, and nobody... No woman, especially when I was in college, high school, spoke about like strength training at all. Like yeah, at all. That like was a guy thing. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And they looked at you like, oh, psh. you know, now it's it's definitely different. But, right. So you've seen you know. it actually progress oh, over the years. Absolutely. And especially in classes, you know, more so even in the gym. Okay. You know, even with women, you know, and the things now today with CrossFit especially, yes. you know, that's definitely a platform where women are, you know, I love it, like, especially when you see the competitions, Yes. you know, they're just so bad, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, and especially, like, kickboxing oh, forget and it. all of those forget it. UFC Oh, my God, now, forget it. They're getting it's into incredible. a lot more, and contact, more contact Yes, sports. and I always think it's interesting to watch women fight more so that I... I, they're like brutal. Absolutely. I don't know. It's almost Absolutely. like the men are more careful. I don't yes. know what it is. Yes. Like my twin has done, and I don't know how she does it. She's done a few fights, boxing, and oh, she, wow. she and kicks butt. She's so great. You know, but she's you would a, get into? No, no, definitely not. Really? No. Sticking with the classes? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> so what are your recommendations for people doing their own workouts or with a personal trainer and the gym classes? Um, You know... If you can do something, you know, 20 minutes, let's say if you're at home, mix up some strength, you know, even if you can knock out, you know, like, I know it sounds crazy. If you have like nothing to do, you're in a hotel room, you know, knock out like 20 burpees, mm -hmm. you know, 25 push-ups, you know, 50 sit-ups, right. and then do like, uh, like 30 second sprints or okay. 20 seconds on, 20 off. Okay. You know, as far as the gym, I would always recommend especially if you're just starting out, to get a trainer, just to get your feet wet. Okay. You know, and then you can just go from there. They can, you know, you don't have to train with them forever. Right. You know, they can give you the tools, and you can go off, do your own thing. And the cool thing with class is you can be at any level. Okay. And you can tailor it to yourself, okay. even if it's like, you know, a high-intensity class. Absolutely. And it's for everybody. Of, a lot of these gyms have someone that you can go in and talk to to try and find oh. out what class you should oh, be absolutely. in? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So talk to someone at the main desk? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, awesome. e even if you go in for like a guest pass a day, okay. they'll, they'll even throw recommendations at you. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks for joining another episode of Hashtag This and That on Woman to Woman TV.